Well, now, the subject of teenage girls is never far from the headlines. Sexualisation, cyberbullying, body image and violence are always topics that generate extensive debate. This morning, we have formed a little think tank. We more a think bomb, because we don't have as much time as we'd like. But anyway, we're a little think bomb to help uncover the secret to understanding teenagers. Psychologist Colette Smart is here, as well as Girlfriend Magazine editor Sarah Tucker. And joining us from the Gold Coast is teenage author Steph Bogue. Morning to everyone. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Colette. Yes. Are there major ways in which this generation of teenage girls differs from previous generations? Well, I'm so glad that we had Kim Wilde on earlier because I think this is this think tank is not about pathologising young girls. Mm -hmm. I think every generation has always worried about the next one coming up. Although I must say there are differences in each generation and we are seeing differences that this generation face compared mm -hmm. to, say, when I was growing up. Yep. The three main areas that I see, say, in my practice are binge drinking. Now, binge drinking is not the majority of young girls, um, but those that are binge drinking in the minority are starting to binge drink much earlier than previous generations. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, obviously technology. Um, technology is a fantastic tool, we all know that, but we're having this 24-7 exposure mm. to images that younger and younger girls are now seeing and so we, it's leading to what we are calling sexy as the new uniform for young girls. Yep. So being sexy is, is the most important thing above your brains or your values and so we're seeing more and more girls um, starting to have, uh, school girls particularly, having multiple sexual partners. That has gone up from 4% to 20%, so still the minority, but 4 to 20% multiple partners in the last 30 years. Is that a worry? That is a worry because, because obviously young girls are uh, feeling, what we're noticing is it's, it's not because they want to a lot of the time, they're feeling pressured, they're feeling yep. like they should or they're expected because being sexy is what gives them meaning. Sure. Steph, I want to bring you in now. Uh, one of the big changes I think is the role social media plays in teenagers lives. How big a role does it play in your life? Uh, it plays quite a big role in my life I think both uh, socially and professionally. Uh, you know staying in touch with friends through Facebook is such a natural thing now and I only really notice how all pervasive and integral it is to life when I kind of try and take a step back from it and, uh, you know, <laughs> and you turn can't. everything off. I'm not, I'm not as addicted to it as I, as I think other people tend to be but mm -hmm. Uh, it's it's such a natural part of just everyday life, you know, checking Facebook, uh, updating Twitter. It's yes. It's the first thing you do in the morning. Yeah. If you're constantly having a conversation with the world, when do you have the interior monologue with yourself? Um, Sarah, you know, teen publications are often blamed, I guess, for what is perceived as the increasing sexualisation of young girls. I mean, do you think there's an element of truth in that? No, I mean, obviously I can only speak for girlfriend, but I think it's completely unfair and I think anyone who's saying that probably hasn't picked up a magazine like Girlfriend in the last 10 years. Yeah, right. I mean, when I was reading Girlfriend like 15 years ago, we had cover lines like make him sizzle in bed and all these really sexy type cover lines. I know when I was reading Girlfriend, we would never do something like that these days. We have so many rules and regulations that mm -hmm. we enforce on ourselves and, um, and that, you know, we're so responsible for our readers in that way. We don't even say, you know, look sexy. We wouldn't even use that terminology mm. uh, in the magazine. So if anything we've kind of regressed yeah mm. I mean it's a really interesting area isn't it I mean, per se sexualization is, is not such a bad thing if it's voluntary and you know what to do with it I suppose but I mean I think though it's because it's all pervasive uh, that, yeah. that's the problem and, and it's becoming what girls are aspiring to yeah. and so we need we really need parents to be having role models for young girls that are girls don't need their mums or aunts to be 40 year old best friends uh, they need uh, role models uh, you yeah, can't nice. know what a, what a great strong woman is yeah. who doesn't think being sexy is the most important thing unless you see them yep. in action. Yeah, yep. So true. get technology out of the bedroom so you can watch your daughter's body language. <clears throat> Talk to them about media messages and let's have a, a collective responsibility with media, with not just parents, yeah, with it's everybody. A, it's a collaborative thing. Yeah. Uh, sadly we're going to have to leave it there ladies. Thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> it's gone. Colette, Sarah and to you Steph as well. Thanks very much for joining us this morning. Good on you.